Rim lighting is the ability to light up the rim or edge of the model. And to determine where that is, the shader uses the normals on the model. So the normals sort of point in or point outwards from the surface of the mesh and tell the shader which direction the surface is facing. So as the surface faces away from the camera, it brightens it up. And you can see these two look very different. And what's happening here is the normal select is using pixel for this one and vertex for this one. So what pixel does is it uses the normal map applied to the model and vertex does not. So if you don't have a normal map on your model, the pixel and vertex versions will look exactly the same. Just know that if you want it to follow your normal map, use pixel mode. And if you want it to just follow the model's base normals, use vertex mode. Next up, we have invert rim lighting. All this does is invert where it is. Next up, we have the rim color. It can change to any color you want, even black. And that's all that does. Next up, we have the width. Let me select the correct one. That just changes how wide it is, zero being not wide at all, and one covering the entire mesh. If your rim edge is not sharp, which we can look at here, if your rim edge is not very sharp, you can sort of, you can have the uh, gradient go from the edge to the center, but it's not going to make the whole thing white. And as you sharpen it, you're going to get a harder edge. And when you increase it, it's going to cover the whole thing. You're probably never really going to want your rim lighting to cover the entire model, but it's an option and just know that that's how it works. So we're going to keep rim sharpness at a gentle fade on the edge. Rim emission is just how emissive your rim light is. So if I go into this model settings, you can sort of make it emissive. And emission just means that your model is basically lighting itself up. You're not going to light anything up around it, but it can light itself up. So if I turn off the lights in this scene, you can see that we still see that because it's emissive. If we go back into its settings. If we turn off emission, you'll see that it's totally black because it's not emitting light anymore. And you'll see that the rim brighten doesn't do anything. And that's important to know for when we turn the lights back on. So let's turn these lights back on. And let's take a look. So when I brighten up the rim, you can see it kind of looks like a mission, but when it's in shadow, it's still sort of darker than when it's in light. This is useful for when you want your rim light to be brighter than the default settings, but you don't want it to glow in the dark. So you use emission if you want it to be bright in all areas, including the dark. And you use brighten if you want to brighten it up without making it glow in the dark. So they both have their own use cases, but just know that that's the basic distinguish, or that's how you distinguish between what you want to use. Next up we have rim color bias. All this does is go between the color you chose if you set this to one, room color bias to one, it'll set it to the color of your choosing. But if you set the room color bias to zero, it'll actually use the color on the mesh. So if I go in here and I set a main texture to a rainbow, like this, and then change the color to white, but it's just a rainbow, pile that a little bit, you can see that the rim color, or where it's brightened, brightened around the edge, is actually using the rainbow color. But if I set the color bias to 1, it's going to go back to that green and not use the color at all. So this is useful if you say, say you have a skin texture and there's darker spots and lighter spots, and you don't want to just have a uniform red color across the whole surface, you can then just set the color bias to 0 and it will brighten up those spots without having to you know apply a texture for what color each area should be 
Next up, we have the rim texture. All this is is a texture for what color the rim should be. We have a rainbow in this case, and we can tile that and pan it faster or slower. Do whatever you want. Next up, we have the mask. This is just going to be black and white for where you know the rim should show up or not show up. If it's black, you'll have no rim light. If it's white, you will have full rim light. In this case, we're just using a texture that looks like this. So you can see where these white lines are. We have the rim light. Next up in this new section, which re actually represents a new category in the shader, we have width noise. So what width noise does is basically allow you to put in noise texture or any texture you want, and that actually controls the width of the rim. So if we go into this texture, for example, you'll see where it's black, I believe. Uh, let's get stars. So I guess where it's black, it is not modifying it. And where the white is, it's actually like pulling it away. So if I get something that looks like actual noise, like this, you'll see the whiter parts are sort of pushing the rim outwards and the black parts are pushing it inward or pulling it inward. So if I tile this a ton, you can see that it gets kind of messy. And if I tile it not very much, you can see that it kind of looks smoky because it's sort of pulling in where it's where the texture is dark and then like pushing out where it's light. And this can look good or bad depending on your use case. If you want to sort of play with this without messing the te or messing with the texture colors, you can adjust the intensity. So if it's at zero, it's just going to be a normal rim light. And as you increase the intensity, it'll use that mask or the width noise more. And last but not least, we have the shadow mix-in. All this does is modify your rim light using your light map or your shadow map. So what's happening here is that instead of going across the whole model, it's actually going to be wider in the lid area and thinner in the dark area. And that's controlled by the mix-in value. So if your mix-in is zero, it's just gonna be the same everywhere. But if you wanna mix it in with the lighting settings, you can turn this to one and it'll look like this. And then because this shader uses um, shadow ramps, I don't always know where the shadow is because it's just based on what you set as the texture. So we need to allow the user to modify sort of where the shadow starts and stops. So in this case, the shadow starts 50% of the way across the model and we'll set this to 0.5. So it goes right to the edge of the shadow. But if you wanted it to go all the way across, you could set it to zero. And if you wanted it to basically not exist, you could set it to one. I'm gonna leave it at 0.5. And if you wanna modify how wide this is, your rim width still plays a part, but the uh, it might not go as far as you'd like. So there's actually a width modifier here to make it wider or smaller. That covers all of rim lighting. If you have any questions about this, feel free to join the Discord and ask questions there. Avoid asking questions in the YouTube comments. It's a little hard to answer technical questions there. Head on over to the Discord if you need any help. And that's all. Thanks for watching.